simulation ending cheat code. Up, up, down, down, left, right. Hello world, it's Siraj, and the AI research lab DeepMind recently introduced their newest AI dubbed Alpha Star. AlphaStar was the first AI to defeat a top professional player in the popular game StarCraft II with a final score of 5-0. It was an exciting event with both sides uncertain about the outcome, but in the end, Team Liquid's Mana humbly accepted defeat. Back in 2016, when DeepMind's AlphaGo ended up beating the world champion at the popular game of Go, a result that experts thought would take decades to accomplish, it resulted in a flurry of interest in AI technology, especially in China. It used a technique called deep reinforcement learning to assess the value of all possible positions on the board, then used a search algorithm called a Monte Carlo tree search to choose its next move, picking the best one. Last year, DeepMind again stunned the world with the release of a new algorithm dubbed AlphaFold that was able to predict how proteins fold, winning first place in an annual competition Competition made for that specific purpose. It proved that AI could be used to help solve hard scientific problems, that these game environments were indeed just a test bed. AlphaFold used two residual neural networks to solve a supervised learning problem, predicting protein properties from genetic sequences. Good job, pattern matching. You did it again, buddy. Now, with the release of AlphaStar, we've got to ask the question, what are the real world applications of this victory? AlphaStar is more impressive than AlphaGo and AlphaFold combined. Here's why. First of all, StarCraft has been played in professional sports tournaments for more than 20 years. It's a sci-fi universe, real-time strategy game, and the most common way to play is a 1v1 tournament over five games. To start, a player chooses one of three different alien races. Each race has its own distinct set of characteristics and abilities. Once selected, a player starts with a number of worker units, each which can gather basic resources to build more units, structures, and technologies. Using these creations, players can harvest even more resources and build increasingly more sophisticated bases and structures, as well as new capabilities to defeat the other player. It's like building an entire city with an armed military, and as such, a player has to use an intelligent strategy to win. This involves game theory. Since there's not a single strategy that will win, there are multiple paths to success. And unlike in Go, there is imperfect information. A player will actively discover things by scouting. It's not all known all at once. The game takes up to an hour to complete, so actions taken early in the game may not pay off long-term, and this requires long-term planning. It's also all real time, so it's not like the alternating turns of Go. And perhaps the most mind-blowing fact is the action space, which is the number of possible actions an agent can take at any point. There are hundreds of different units and buildings that have to be controlled all at once, which results in a combinatorial explosion of possibilities. Go had 10 to the 170th possible moves, which is more possibilities than there are atoms in the universe. But StarCraft? 10 to the 1,685th. Even Pewds doesn't have that many subs. So back to the real world significance of this discovery. Demis Hassabis, the CEO of DeepMind, stated that the long-term planning and strategizing ability that AlphaStar exhibits can be used for other long-term planning tasks like weather prediction, climate modeling, and language understanding. That makes total sense. But what else can we use long-term planning algorithms for? Can we use them to design swarms of self-replicating photosynthetic nanobots to quickly and cheaply suck pollutants from the atmosphere to save our lungs? How about long-term strategizing for our own lives, an assistant that tells us the steps we need to take in order to accomplish any goal we'd like, designing drugs to cure all diseases, creating new strategies to combat the weaponization of social media, generating better documentation of 3Blue1Brown's Python animation library. We need to think of radically new ideas, and AI can help us do that. We have to find the right data sets, 
properly frame our problem mathematically as well as our objective function and let it work for us. So let's move into the architecture of how this worked, starting with the data. AlphaStar used two distinct data sets. The first was a series of anonymized game replays from expert players, the largest set ever released. Since these games were pre-recorded, the result of every action ever taken was known, making this part a supervised learning problem. The second data set it used was real-time gameplay versus itself. And not just one or two games, 200 years worth of gameplay sped up because we can speed up time in a game world on computing devices. AlphaStar got pretty good having first been trained on the game replay data set, then it became really, really good after playing against itself in the second data set. The team hasn't yet released a paper, and the only indication we have as to what its architecture could be comes from two sentences in the blog post. In the first sentence, it says the neural network architecture applies a transformer torso to the units combined with a deep LSTM core, an autoregressive policy head with a pointer network and a centralized value baseline. The second architecture specific sentence is that the weight update rule is an efficient and novel off policy actor critic reinforcement learning algorithm with experience replay, self imitation learning and policy distillation. That's a lot of concepts. So I'm going to explain just three of the most important components here, the transformer network, the pointer network, and the multi agent reinforcement learning setup. Then I'll give my best educated guess as to how these three components were put together to create alpha star. Deep mind use deep RL. They beat Starcraft with it. What the hell? Say it. Let's first start with the transformer network. This was a neural network that was first proposed in a paper titled Attention is All You Need by Google Brain. Google wanted to make its language translation system more accurate, so they used a model that uses a technique called attention to do that, as well as speeding up training time. At a high level, a fully trained transformer network can take an input in one language and output it in a different language. If we look closer, we'll see that it actually consists of two components, an encoder model and a decoder model. The encoder is actually a stack of encoders and the decoder is a stack of decoders. Each one of these encoders consists of a feed forward neural network and what's called a self attention mechanism. The input to each encoder thus flows first through the self attention layer, then to the feed forward network. By flows, I mean matrix multiplication, not flows in the hip hop sense. The decoder has those two components as well, but it also has an attention layer that helps it focus on relevant parts of the input data. The input data is partitioned and each partition is encoded into a vector using an embedding algorithm. Each of these embeddings are independently fed through each layer, which allows for parallelization. This is called multi headed attention. Each vector is split into several heads multiplied by weight matrices. The results are concatenated and multiplied by another weight matrix. And that's the output. These weight values are trained. It learns the strength of each vector of its relevance in the larger whole. It knows what to pay attention to for whatever objective function is defined. Rather than naively treating the entire input vector as equally relevant, it learns which parts are most likely the most relevant. The decoder components are architected in the same way. Altogether, the encoder starts by processing the input sequence, then the output of the top encoder is transformed into a set of attention vectors. These are used by each decoder in its encoder decoder attention layer, which helps the decoder focus on appropriate parts of the input sequence. After the encoding phase is over, the decoding phase begins. Each component successfully outputs its results until finally the result is fed into a softmax layer which outputs a set of probabilities of likely values. Through optimization and knowing what the output should be, this network will learn how to predict the most likely output. That's the first component. Let's now move on to the second component, the auto regressive policy head with a pointer network. A pointer network is actually pretty similar to a transformer in that it's also a sequence to sequence model with attention. What makes a pointer network unique are two things. 
The output of a pointer network is discrete and corresponds to positions in an input sequence, and the number of target classes in each step of the output depends on the length of the input, which is variable. Pointer nets are great for problems like sorting words or numbers. Sorry, bubble sort, no one loves you. As for its autoregressive policy head, an autoregressive model is one where every input sequence depends not only on the input, but also previous outputs. So the pointer network is an autoregressive model that outputs a policy. What's a policy, you ask? That brings us to the third and final component, the multi-agent reinforcement learning architecture. The idea behind reinforcement learning is that in some simulated environment where time is an important element, an agent will take an action, receive a reward, then transition to a new state and repeat this process again. It learns a policy, a mapping of states to actions. When the agent is a deep neural network, it's considered deep reinforcement learning, of which there are many different architectures. When there are multiple agents learning at the same time, it's called multi-agent deep reinforcement learning. And a centralized baseline is a value by which all these decentralized agents can agree is the standard that they can compare their learnings against to sync the learning process. A type of deep reinforcement learning algorithm called actor critic has one neural network be a critic in that it measures how good the action taken was and is value-based. The other, the actor, measures how an agent behaves and it is policy-based. So those are the three major ideas of the system, a transformer network, a pointer network, and a multi-agent deep reinforcement learning actor critic architecture and swag, I guess. What I'm now going to do is make an educated guess as to how these components were used together and when. The transformer network acts as the critic network. The actor network is the pointer network. And this coupling is fed input data from the raw game interface, which is a list of units and their properties. The output of it is fed to the pointer network. The pointer network then using the policy it's learned thanks to the transformer network and its own weight values outputs an action. In the first part of training, it compared its actions to those of the gamers it watched during all those hours of free play videos, rewarding or punishing its weight values depending on how similar they were. Then in the second phase where it played against itself at each iteration, new versions of itself were replicated, all of them learning, each of them exploring the huge action space of StarCraft gameplay while ensuring that each competitor performed well against the strongest strategies and doesn't forget how to defeat earlier ones. In the end, the most strategically sound agent is chosen as the final fully trained model. To train AlphaStar, they built a distributed training setup running for 14 days, using using 16 TPUs for each agent. And the final AlphaStar agent contained the most optimal mixture of strategies that were discovered and was able to run on a single desktop GPU. As you can see, 2019 is already turning out to be an exciting year for AI. There are three things to remember from this video. DeepMind's AlphaStar algorithm beat one of the top StarCraft II players in the world, a feat many experts thought would take much longer. AlphaStar used deep reinforcement learning to do so, the de facto technique for AI in game environments. And this technology has the potential to help us solve problems that require predictions over very long-term sequences. What's a problem you want to solve with AI? Let me know in the comment section and please subscribe for more technology videos. For now, I've got to play StarCraft, so thanks for watching.